What's the hardest thing about learning how to fight with a sword? Well, there's one thing that's extremely effective, supremely efficient, and is the sine qua non of scientific swordsmanship. Of all the martial arts, this is unique to fencing. I've been teaching a long time. I've had a couple of thousand students, you know, give or take. And there's one thing they all had to learn from scratch. So much of what we do is about generating force. Throwing a ball or a spear, swinging a stick or a club or a baseball bat or a golf club throwing a punch or a kick. It's about strength and speed and power, hard and fast. This stuff comes natural to us because we've been doing it for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Now, fencing has only been around a couple of hundred years. Now, fighting with the edge of the sword shares quite a bit of that instinctive movement. That's why some people are much more comfortable with saber. Uh, they find it much easier, much more natural, because it is. It's using the body in a way that we've become accustomed to over a long, long period of time. It's become instinctive. In fact, let's call that instinctive swordsmanship or primitive swordsmanship. Primitive meaning at the first stage of development using the sword as if it were a sharp club. But fighting with the point of the sword, that's very different. In fact, it's the complete opposite. That's why everyone has so much trouble learning the rapier or small sword or foil, if you want to call it that. It is counterintuitive. Scientific swordsmanship begins with the use of the point. It's the power of the straight line over the power of the circle. Although boxing and fencing are like this, in this respect, fencing has much more in common with archery than with boxing. I sometimes compare throwing a punch to cracking a whip. The right hand punch begins with the left toe and the energy rotates up through the feet, through the hips, through the shoulders, comes out the fist, which is like the popper of the whip. Fighting with the edge of the sword is basically the same idea. You gather in energy, you release energy through the power of the circle. But fighting with the point of the sword is not like cracking a whip, it's more like um, a horse and carriage. The horse starts forward, takes the slack out of the rigging, pulls the carriage forward. It's in that order. The horse pulls the rigging, pulls the carriage. The carriage doesn't push the horse. The carriage doesn't move before the horse moves. The horse moves first, then the carriage. Fighting with the point is also like um, Imagine a length of chain. Pull the first link of the chain. The first link pulls the second link, which pulls the third link, which pulls the fourth link, which pulls the fifth link, etc. Chain doesn't start moving at the third link. The second link doesn't push the first link. First pulls second, pulls third, pulls fourth in that order, in that sequence, and always in that order and sequence. That's the way you move when you fight with the point. The point moves first. The point pulls the hand. The hand pulls the arm. The arm pulls the body and the foot. The point goes first. The body goes last. The sword goes first. The body follows not the other way around. Now, because this movement pattern is so counterintuitive, the only way to get it right is to practice it correctly, 
perfectly enough times that it becomes your brain's preferred response under point-specific conditions. I'm talking about perfect practice. Mindful, attentive, and as precise in every detail as possible. You cannot afford to be making any mistakes. You have to avoid mistakes. You have to repeat this particular pattern and ingrain it without any variation into your body and into your brain. If you don't get this right, nothing else is going to be right either because this is the foundation of scientific fencing. To develop this movement pattern, there are two basic exercises, thrusting against the wall and lunging against the wall. But it has to be perfect. You, you can't do this by feel in the beginning because what you feel is not going to be right. You don't have this feel, you don't have this instinct. So you're gonna need feedback on each and every repetition. You're gonna have to have a mirror. You might be able to use videotape. But the very best thing is to have immediate feedback on every repetition from a competent teacher. You know, when I was a studly young lad without much skill, I crossed blades with an elderly lady who beat me like a dog every time, every time. I couldn't touch her, not even once, not even by accident. Now, she was not stronger than me, I guarantee you. She wasn't faster than me. She had what I didn't have. She had skill. Scientific swordsmanship it isn't about strength or speed or size. It's about science. It's about physics and geometry and psychology. Skill, cunning, and composure, we like to say. Fencers aren't born. They're made. They're made through education, dedication, determination, and a whole lot of perspiration. How good you get with a sword depends entirely on how much and how well you practice. There aren't any tricks, there aren't any hacks, there aren't any shortcuts. You reap what you sow, Daddy-O. What could be more fair than that?